Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry for that random bit there. Um, if my sleeve falls down, it's just because my dress is really loose today. Hi guys, I'm Drew, um, otherwise known as Blair, but I have changed my name. Um, I can make another video on that as well, kind of talking about my gender identity and how things have shifted in the past year or so. But today I'm going to make a video on being the charioteer of your own shadow. And this kind of concept came together today kind of really loosely in my mind, but it's something that has been sort of working its way through the ethers of my own shadow scheme as well. And I wanted to show you two cards, kind of just sort of address a, a couple of things that really stand out to me um, and really just sink into that idea that you are the charioteer, you are the one holding the reins when it comes to doing shadow work. So, um, like I mentioned before in my previous video, um, I'm a little bit rusty with making videos and I may say I'm a lot, um, just getting my confidence back and I do have notes because I just, I find it really easy to talk about and have notes because it keeps me on track as opposed to just rambling and I stutter a lot because I have a bit of a lisp, so yeah, anyway, random shit done. <laughs> So today I really wanted to work with these cards. So the card that I chose for today was the Shadow card um, 5 of Spirals in the Chrysalis deck. And this really talks about conflict and sort of facing that conflict and really working through what your shadows are and facing those inner dragons. So when I picked up this card, the question that I actually personally asked, which I'm not too afraid to share myself was sort of what I need to work um, on in the other world journey my journeys into the Celt uh, Celtic underworld or Celtic whatever you like to call it because that's where I feel a lot of my shadows are currently residing because at the moment I'm learning and sinking myself into Celtic myth and magic I feel like crying every time I think about it because it's such a passionate thing for me so to be able to address that and work through that shadow myself and be able to really sink into the other world, uh, my guides that are there because I actually do have a dragon guide and I do believe that my dragon guide is in the other world at the moment. So it's kind of stepping beyond the physical into the inner and really the shadow can be both because I do see the shadow as both an internal and external. I feel like for me myself personally, um, when I'm doing shadow work, I'm bringing it to the surface so that it's not playing out in the um, physical. Um, it will still play out in the physical because, you know, we, we do uh, attend to our shadows through our whole period of life. So there's never going to be, I don't think, a shadow that um, won't be made aware of because things change. That's the whole, um, not the whole essence of life, but, you know, the one constant in life is that things change. So therefore our shadows will change and the things that were in the shadows change as we work through them and sometimes you know we may start a little bit of shadow work or dealing with our shadows and have to sort of put them aside for a bit so they get suppressed again but also when they're made aware and they're in your consciousness they're a little more easy to attain than if you put them back in their shadow and don't deal with them at all for you know a couple of years which you know that's your own journey so in terms of sort of this card I really depicted as sort of um, clawing his way down into that darkness into that depth of the shadow because if you see there and it is sort of little it's not really a cave per se but you can see the ground below because he has paved the way for enlightenment he's paved the way for um, he's he's made light basically he's lit uh he, oh he's lit his awareness sorry I'm mumbly um and he can see what's beneath but not entirely like when he gets down there he's not going to know exactly what's down there but he has an awareness he's already sort of started that process he's made the movement um although i do see it as he's clawing his way down so he's not exactly like flying down he's really gripping onto those sides of the cliffs and really resisting going all the way down because when we do go into our shadows of course it is so fucking frightening there have been many times in my life that i have sort of sat down to do shadow work and or look at my shadow even just in my mind and i've i've, I've made, made it aware it's in my mind i'm 
line to it but at the same time it's like kind of pushing shit up a hill really or shit down a hill because um i'm not ready to go full full swinging and i'm a very i'm a person who is kind of like it's all or nothing kind of girl which i'm kind of working through but i'm an all or nothing person so when it comes to shadow work like you know i sit down i grab my journal i grab my cards you know i want to get right into it i want to get through it but also sometimes our shadow can be our shadow i know that sounds hilarious but work with me um our shadow can be our shadow wanting to do such shadow work can also be a shadow in itself because we may not be ready to do it we may be pushing ourselves way too hard or way too much to do it and way too much to get into it as well because you you know um if anyone who has done shadow work especially when you're journaling it is really intense because it's it's almost like you know you ask one question a question is presented you work through that and that opens a whole other like seven billion universes that you can explore inside your mind and i'm a creative person too so not only do it do i do shadow work um you know with the physical the mental and all that sort of stuff i do shadow work with my characters too and it's pretty intense i mean that sounds really strange but man i love doing it and it is it, it just opens up so many questions after question after question and you know if you're very um if you're very intense or i don't really like to word, use the word intense but let's just say if you're very um energetic and you know you're like i want to sit down i want to do this i'm dedicated that's really really good too but sometimes you can overdo it as well and that can become a shadow too because you build a resistance around it and you don't want to do it because there's too much it's too overwhelming so that kind of plays a really interesting correlation i guess a sort of dovetail dovetails into the chariot i'll just pop this little guy down for a second now when i sort of be the charioteer of my own shadow work what i'm really doing is bringing this shit out of my subconscious mind and i love to bring that stuff out of my subconscious mind because not only is it bringing out the negatives it's bringing out the positives as well it's alerting me to what's going around and i can really see where i have manifested stuff in the physical world especially when i'm doing it on a regular basis uh, i can really see where <laughs> where i'm not working on my shit and where it's just sort of being projected onto everyone else and or you know sort of turning up as well or um, relationships will sort of mirror stuff back to me as well i'm very much into the mirror but bringing that positive stuff as well there is so much juicy good stuff in the shadow uh and it's painful to work through and painful to understand at first and i do think you know if you are doing shadow work be prepared for that pain that is important that that is important to release pain is a form of release even if it's agonizing at that point in time even if it's it can be a dull pain or it can be a torturous pain that really is up to you how you sort of discern what you're going to do with those emotions feelings and reactions i think the best thing to is when you are working with the chariot energy is to make people aware that you need that space to do it because with the chariot i really feel like it is a movement card it's a it's a card of really building momentum building those steps now those could be baby steps or you could um you could really just go bypass this guy and really go right into it like speed through horse through like race through although i wouldn't recommend racing through but you kind of get what i'm talking about like you just go into it like and i think the thing is to make that time sacred because when you are in the chariot position really positively that can be a lot about triumph and willpower and it can be also about success and successfully like getting into that um mindset getting into that mode getting into a really good flow being aware of what's happening in your body being aware of what's happening on the page and what's coming through because you're moving and that energy can really move through your body and it can really move through your mind as well and when you're in that process you know you may be there may be people around you who are at a slower pace not really with the chariot energy so it's really important that if you're doing shadow work on yourself you need to let people know that you need that space because you need that energy you need to keep up that momentum um you know i mentioned before not going fully into it so that you burn yourself out but that's not what it's about movement is about taking steps it's not about being busy it's not about being intense it's not about you know 
burning yourself out by addressing these things in your unconscious mind, subconscious mind. It's about making movements and really being courageous enough to actually step beyond that. I really feel like the um, chariot card is a wild horse. It's being your own wild horse because going into shadow work is... I mean, a lot of us do shadow work. A lot of us attempt our shadows. A lot of us look at our shadows because we have an understanding of what it is but there are so many people out there who don't understand the shadow in maybe like Jung's term Jung's term sorry my nose but they're dealing with it in different ways um you know for example uh like my brother for example my older brother he deals with his shadow by addressing God in a different way than I would. His shadow work would be church and praise and music and loving and doing stuff like that. That's his sort of dealing with his shadows in that way and whatever way he wants to work with them. Whereas I'm a witch so I deal with mine differently. And you know a lot of people too when, when they do know what shadow work is aren't ready to address it either and that's perfectly okay I think that's really really important it's something that I actually had to address myself because for the past year or so um, I had been doing shadow work I had been addressing my chariot I had been sort of going into my inner dragons and battling with them and sort of seeing them and knowing them and I realized that there are times when I just can't like there are times when I can't sit down and journal for three hours because there's too much stuff going on um, for example, for me recently, uh, I, I had a friend who left, uh, like a, a very, very deep friendship that ended and that really crushed me as well. Around the same time, my partner and I separated. Um, I, ha I got enrolled into uni, which was very good, but then I also realized that I had to move out by myself because it was coming to a point in my life where eventually I'd have to move out by myself and that scared the crap out of me because I've never done that before. And really having the courage to just be aware of those things was enough. That was enough of a movement. I felt that I was in my chariot position because I'd, I'd made myself aware of that. But I could not sit down and journal for the shit, like, for the life of me, really, about what was going on. I couldn't get deep, 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 deep into those shadows. I couldn't deal with what was going on because there was so much stuff going on. I had to take it in baby steps. I had to get... You know, I had to pet the horse. I had to calm it down. I had to put my luggage on the back of it. Um, you know, to make the, sure the reins were uh, tight and clear and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, baby steps. And then finally I did get on the horse and I felt so much better having prepared that slowly. So never be afraid to make that preparation for shadow work slowly as well. And go into those shadows in a intentional way. As long as you're doing it in, with intent, I really feel like you can go at it, at it at any door at any angle really sorry my nose is like really congested so and that's what I really feel about this um, card I feel like it's a wild horse you can be that courageous um, person who has willpower who has the willpower to do this to be one of the few thousands of people on this earth who's willing to step up and go oh shit you know this is in my life. This is the stuff that's in my mind. This is the stuff that's floating around the ether. This is the stuff that's being physically manifested in such a way that it's affecting my life. Whether that be positively or negatively in my mind, it's affecting my life. And do I want to live with this? You know, do I can I live with this being in the mind, in in the unconscious? Can I live with not dealing with it? Because I know that I can't live with dealing um, without dealing with stuff. I did it for a long, long, long time. I didn't want to be a burden, I didn't want to be um, a stain on society because a lot of my shadows are revolving around being my own person, being my own boss, being my own creative person because I'm an artist so there's a lot of stigma around that and because a lot of that time I had mental health issues as well so you know I could only move, a cert like I could only move professionally or mentally or physically in uh, a short period of time in a you know in a certain kind of way I guess without having all these restrictions and stuff placed upon me and I really had to deal with that and that was hard but at the end of the day I eventually got on that horse and fuck man when I got onto that horse and owned that shadow and rode that shadow home 
I had, it really opened up a whole world for me. It truly, truly opened up a whole world that I never even thought of. And because I have been dealing with this and because I have been owning my own chariot and taking care of the horse and loving it and spending time with it, <coughs> sorry, and being really one with the movement of this energy and being my own firecracker and wild child, I've really been able to let go of the people in my life that don't serve me, the situations that don't serve me and really own my dream, own myself, own what I want from my life, you know, not be sort of withheld in this sort of cage that a shadow can be, you know, I didn't have a veal on my face anymore, I knew what was out there, it was freaking scary, I've had to face a lot of paranoia and mental shit, but I did it, <coughs> and you guys can too, I really need some water guys, so have a look at this card, why I drink some water. It's so freaking hot here. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Ceremony over. Okay, so that's what I feel about the chariot. Now, coming at it from a different angle as well, you really think about being responsible for your own mental house because whenever I see the chariot card in traditional cards I always think of a house like they're in the house <coughs> sorry they're in a house but it's really just a grandstand I guess or you know a charity's bo box or your own podium or whatnot however you see it I see it as a house. I see that it's kind of like a caravan with horses. It sounds really strange, but... And I am in control of where that goes. Like, I am in control of where that goes. Where that, those two horses go. You know, my light and my dark side. My polarities. I am ultimately, in, at the end of the day, in control of where I want to guide that responsibility. And that is my responsibility. So shadows are your responsibility. Then no one else's. No one can go into your mind and say, well, I want to sort of segregate this off here and do this with this. And I think you should do that. That's how the shadows were created. That is how those freaking shadows were created. By listening to conditioning and beliefs and things that really don't resonate with you. And I think that's a part of being responsible for your own home. Your own mental home. And also, you know... If you are living in that um, caravan, if you are being carried around by a horse and cart, if you are being driven by your horse or riding a horse, you really are responsible. And that is an empowering, empowering thing to be really responsible for that part of yourself that, you know, no one can take away from you. No one can dictate. You are totally, you may not be totally in control of what comes up, but you are in control of how you deal with it. And, you know, you could talk to people about it. You can write about it. You can speak about it. You can create art about it. There's so many different ways that you can use those shadows as a way to move yourself forward through life. And, you know, like I mentioned, I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I use my shadows. Uh, you know, I have a question on my wall, for example, like how can evil reincarnate? And how can evil be remain, sorry, how can evil remain human while humans can remain evil? So that was one of my shadows, like I've dealt with a lot of strange, kind of twisted situations and people in my life, and that was my shadow, and I've sort of brought it up and dealt with it, and a lot of the times I've dealt with it through creative writing, and I shared those stories, I posted those stories, I'm honing those stories, and I'm going to be able to publish it, and that's going to help me move forward in my life, that's going to help me make movement and be the wild horse that I want to be in my own career and in my own creative life and in my own community so by really jumping on that horse and riding at home with your home clear and focused you can really achieve a lot by tapping into the subconscious and being the own like being your own charity of your own shadow having another sip girls and guys so what else did I want to say about this? Ah, uh, yes. The last thing I want to sort of 
tie into both cards is that for the chariot here I also want to look at the element of water because the chariot is chariot here, the chariot rather the chariot is the element of water and water is about sort of emotions the river of life our sort of emotional landscape as well and what we put in the water what we take out of the water we're made of water what guides us like the moon and energy like that which is why I really love this because it's I really feel like we're guided by the tides but also you want to think about sort of letting that energy and emotions come up whether it's in stillness or chaos or whether there is stillness in your mind or chaos because sometimes when we address our shadows and sit down at the page we might be ready and aware but there's still some resistance and it's just being able to sit with that stillness as well because I do feel that the chariot has stillness to it it is able to be still because you have to be able to be still to be um to have strong willpower sometimes willpower takes patience you have to work for the conflict you have to have patience with time and space patience with other people and patience with yourself so i do really think that the chariot has its still moments as well and that's really makes up a, a large part of the carb so it's really feeling into the river of life and the tides and what moves you and asking what moves you what what's coming up for you right now you don't need to work on the whole thing at once. You just need to work on what's coming up for you right now. You know, it might be something really small. It might be something really large. But just sort of feeling into it, whether it's chaotic or still. You know, um, there are ways that you can go about tackling something if it's very overwhelming as well. Which I really want to make a video on both sides of this. I want to make a video on what to do when nothing comes up. And what to do when everything comes up. Because I think they're two in the same but they both have something to bring to the surface because they're a lesson in themselves. So when you're thinking about the chariot, think about your emotions and how you're letting them flow. Let them flow. I think the best thing about facing your shadow and being the uh, charioteer of your shadow is that you do have ownership of your emotions. Your emotions, your own. So you really do have the power to sort of really experience the beauty of sadness and anger and frustration as well as happiness and joy and compassion love all those kinds of emotions that come up when you're doing shadow work or dealing with the shadow lastly i wanted to talk about the dragon in this card so i really see the dragon as a brave creature i really see him as a brave creature because it, it, like i said it does take a lot of courage to uh, tap into your shadows and i really feel like he can either be um, gentle or aggressive. So when we're looking at our shadow, we can also understand that there is a positive and negative aspects of it. So the positive can be the more gentle or passionate side to the suppressed, whereas the aggressive and negative may be some things about ourselves that we really need to focus on because it's um, becoming problematic or it's destructive. So I really feel like the dragon in this card really talks about both. And I love the fire element because for me, the fire reminds me of candles and kind of lighting a candle to contemplate so i would really draw into this energy as well, uh, as well of contemplating with the flame and you know most of us um have candles or lights or you know you can even go outside in and sort of sit under the sun and contemplate because that is a really massive flame um, when you're doing shadow work if it's a really nice day that would be a great thing to do because you're tapping into the solar energy and that's really going to heat up that energy in your heart and your solar plexus to sort of bring that up to the surface so I definitely think about it in that way and I think that's about it so um that's a really long video I'm going to go now and finish up these are the two cards I spoke about today um, I'm going to have a post link below that I wrote in correlation with this video. It has an exercise that you can do just to sort of whether you've been doing shadow work for a while or starting it and it kind of just talks a little bit more about um, the charioteer shadow. S sorry, being the charioteer of your shadow. Okay, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you all later. Bye.